Welcome everyone, my name is Jacob. Thank you for joining me. Broadheads are absolutely fascinating to us as bow hunters. There's always some new iteration or some new spec that really gets our attention. Whether it's the number of blades and the type of tip, the type of bevel that's on the edge of our broadhead, or the composition of our broadhead. And um, I've used fixed blade broadheads for years and shot a lot of things with them. Uh, I like them because they are very durable, uh, but they can serve as a set of veins on the front of your arrow. They have a small, uh, much smaller cutting diameter than a mechanical and therefore leave less of a blood trail. And I wanted to try and evaluate four different mechanical broadheads to determine which one I might use this year. And uh, certainly I could shot them into concrete or plywood or you all have seen those sorts of tests. And really, I just want something to kill an animal uh, when I shoot it with the first arrow. And in evaluating that, I wanted to look at the wound channel as I shoot through this ballistic gel, how the broadhead flew, how it deployed, and then the penetration. And so we're going to take a look at four broadheads here, uh, all mechanical in nature, and see how it did. And let's start with worst to first. So this is the Rage Hyperdermic No Collar Plus P. Obviously no collar meaning there's no band that holds these in. There's sort of pressure that pushes these out. This is about a two inch diameter from tip to tip. This is um, a steel ferrule, steel blades. This is 400 grade steel blades, which are easy to sharpen and you can they, these came out of the box scary sharp and they are easy to get back to scary sharp especially when you compare it to something that's made out of a tool steel tool steel is much more difficult to put a good scary edge on in my opinion so you know these were 60 bucks for three these are by far the most expensive um, they when I shot them they flew very well they they did deploy However, one of the blades didn't lock in. It was sort of folded. Um, and you might see that in a picture or an image that I post here, but it was sort of folded. It did leave a significant wound channel, but the penetration was the least of all of the broadheads at 16 inches. I'm shooting a 70 pound limb bow. This is about a 550 grain arrow. And I shot this at about 10 yards. And so just to give you some details behind that. So number four, the Rage Hyperdermic NC Plus P. Coming in at number three is the Keep Broadhead. This is a mechanical, uh, 100 and it came in at 127 grains. This is sort of a value that you can find on Amazon. It's sort of an Amazon specific broadhead. Steel ferrule, steel blades, looks a lot like a Rage Broadhead. $26 for six of these. I mean, you got to be kidding me. It's just, you know, I could, for 60 bucks, I could get 12 of these. They were not sharp out of the box, but they are sort of that, um, that 400 grade steel, stainless steel, that you could put a really significant edge on. Now, I didn't sharpen any of these broadheads. These are all brand new. And so how they performed was how they performed out of the box. And they this flew fine. It do doesn't have a collar, very similar to the Rage. And um, the penetration was 18 inches, so two inches more than the Rage Broadhead, which is obviously very significant. So if you're looking for something of value, this is the way to go. Um, I mean, if you're in Texas and you're shooting hogs and you want to try something out, this might be something, uh, if you're shooting a lot of animals, this might be something to try. Wound Channel looked great. I mean, it really, it, uh, again, the problem with these, these mechanicals is they can wobble and wiggle. And so as you'll see, I think one of the blades was sort of locked in. The other one was sort of not. And that can be a problem when you think about how, when it enters, enters the, the, the animal, is it going to steer that arrow in a different way than you want it to go? Because it has more pressure on one side because one blade is deployed and one isn't. Coming in at number three is the Muzzy Hybrid uh, HBX. This is actually a, a crossbow broadhead, technically, if you look at the packaging. 
This has about a 1.5 inch cutting diameter. It's uh, steel and steel. Again, 400 grade stainless steel blades. Um, it came in at 50 bucks for three. So uh, <clears throat> sort of on the higher end there. 126.6 grains. So it was a little overweight. The penetration was very solid at 19 and a quarter inches. So significantly more than the other two broadheads. And these... The way that this deploys is it there's got to be pressure on the front. They, these don't lock in. And ostensibly, as long as there's pressure on the front, these blades are fully extended. And then as you can probably see, like if there's not, like if it exits, then these blades will sort of collapse back down. But I was very impressed with its performance. Coming in at number one, the Sever Titanium 2.0. So... It's a titanium ferrule with two steel blades. Again, these are sort of that 400 grade steel blade, very easy to sharpen, uh, can be scary sharp. These came in underweight at 123.2 grains. These are about 16 bucks each, or I bought three. If you buy three of them, you get, you know, they're 48 bucks. Um, the penetration was 19 and 5 eighths inches, so a little bit longer than the Muzzy Hybrid. The cutting diameter is two inches, and the wound channel was was significant, uh, very significant. I'll, you'll probably see an image of that on the screen. And you know, again, here's the thing: they these blades, the way that they're designed is that they're designed to, when they deploy. They they hit a point where they lock together, and these blades did not lock in. They were, they made a significant wound channel as there was pressure on them, but they did not lock in. And I think that that is something that you really have to think about and consider. I'm going to end up shooting these this year. I like them. Uh, I like how they flew. I like the wound channel. Obviously, I like the penetration. But uh, these are things to consider as you evaluate mechanical broadheads for yourself for yourself so you know i hope that this was helpful it certainly was fun for me uh, anytime you get to shoot something like like this but uh i'm just going to ask that you like and subscribe and then uh i'll continue to dive down the, the broadhead space as we move get closer and closer to the season best of luck to everyone talk to you soon <laughs>